Hello, and welcome back to another session of BHA Live, an ongoing series of educational opportunities being hosted by Barbershop Harmony Australia's Harmony Academy. If this is your first session, as always, welcome. Welcome. Sit back, relax, enjoy tonight's presentation. And of course, a big, big welcome back to those of you who've already had the chance to join us for one of our Friday night sessions. Before I get started, I'll get a little bit of technical housekeeping out of the way. If you've joined us with Zoom, please feel free to use the chat function to talk amongst yourselves. However, if you have a specific question about anything that's being presented, please make sure you submit that via the Q&A function. This is going to make sure that the questions all funnel through when they get seen by the panel. We've got a really fun session in store for you tonight this week. It's called How to Impress the Judges, and this is hosted by three members of the Australasian Guild of Barbershop Judges, Kieran O'Day, Rob Sequera, and Ash Schofield. They're going to give you an insight into the judging process, and fortunately, between the three of them, they've got the music, singing, and presentation categories covered. Kieran is a music teacher from Adelaide, South Australia, and he's been involved with BHA since 2007. Having won three national youth gold medals, as well as being an award-winning director and representing Australia in multiple quartet and chorus competitions internationally, Kieran is well-versed in what it takes to excel at barbershop. He's also currently the category specialist for Australia's music judges, as well as previously holding the positions of Vice President Youth Development for Barbershop Harmony Australia and Musical Director of Adelaide Vocal Union. Rob is a multi-instrumentalist with roots in tuned percussion, drums, strings and woodwinds. He's played drums, piano and sung lead vocals in musicals, big bands and jazz quintets around the traps in Sydney, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Rob teaches drums, piano, guitar and a cappella singing. He's coached international level a cappella quartets and choruses in the US, Canada, Asia and Australia. Rob co-led California-based Voices in Harmony to an International Barbershop Society third place bronze medal in 2008. He has sung with international level quartets and choruses, and he's the founder and music director of Vox Canvas, the current Barbershop Harmony Australia 2019 third place bronze medal chorus. He's got 17 years experience performing barbershop music, and he's currently the director of Vocal Evolution and lead with the 2019 silver medal quartet, The Electric Barbercats. He's been an international representative three times in quartet and twice in chorus. Ash is also a performance judge in the AGBJ. When working with the group, he likes to finally explore the why of what they're doing. It can be as broad as an overall plan or theme or as intensively detailed as getting into the delivery of every single word of a song. So there you have our esteemed panel. I will now hand over to the boys for what is sure to be a fantastic session. Over to you, fellas. All righty. Well, uh, let's get a wriggle on, guys. Uh, thanks, everyone, for dropping in, and thanks, everyone, who's watching this uh, delayed. Uh, we're just going to get um, straight into some interesting stuff and talk about ourselves. <laughs> so um, the first uh, thing we were going to talk about is uh, why we got into judging. So uh, why don't we start with... Uh, let's go, Ash. Me? Yeah, All you. Right. I'll, oh, okay, then. All right, so why am I a judge? Well, to be honest, I got into it uh, to, at the beginning to learn more about the art form that I was uh, enjoying. Uh, I wanted to get better scores and figured I could learn all the secrets of what judges wanted by becoming one. Um, and to a degree, it worked. Uh, it was certainly a fast track to understanding the contest world. Uh, you know, learning how to come up with a score and how to give succinct, valuable feedback, it helped my own performance as well as uh, my work with my chorus and any other coaching I've done over the years. So that's how, that's why I got into it. Groovy. Rob, do you want to follow on with your experience? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're coming through great. Fantastic. So um, I've got a, a bit of a funny story here. So I discovered Barbershop, as some of you know, when I was living in California. And uh, the whole judging system was very, like, mysterious to me, right? Like... Um, I remember the first few times we were on stage in this really dark room and then there's these like this row of lights that was the judges and then there was really bright lights on the stage and I remember thinking wow that's like super terrifying um, and then we started to sing and then I just remember in unison all of the judges looked down at their sheet and wrote something down. And we just, I remember thinking, wow, like we, we must have done something really wrong to have all of the paddle write, write, write down some stuff at the same time. And then of course, later on, we realized they're just writing the name of the song, right? <laughs> um, and so then like uh, we, the performance would be done 
And then at the end, we'd get like 10 minutes with this amazing panel of judges, uh, which went by this quickly. And, and so it was still kind of this mysterious thing. So fast forward to uh, me coming back to Australia. And I remember Ali Jameson and I were sitting in the audience uh, watching a contest and we'd look at each other and at the end, we'd, we'd yell out, sold for 74.5. And we were like, you know, <laughs> we were yelling out like singing, judge, uh, singing scores. And most of the time, we were like pretty much like right, right on, the, on the score. And so I thought, oh, maybe I should like do this judging thing. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much how I started. Great. Thanks for that. Um, my story is, is a little closer to Ashes. I remember just thinking, I want to go to judges school because then I'll know everything to do right. And then I'll get those real big scores. Uh, and then I got a judge and it's kind of been my way to uh, give back to an organization which has given me a lot. So um, I very much enjoy it. And that's my story. All right, now let's get into the categories. What is it that we actually judge? So between the three of us, we do have three categories. We have uh, the music category, which uh, this side, you get a red badge. You have singing category with Rob and he's got his lovely blue badge. And uh, for the performance category, uh, you usually get a green badge. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know where I put it. It's somewhere around here. I mean, well, we, we haven't had to use it this year, so I think we can forgive you for that. It's hung uh, up with my other stuff. It's somewhere. Fair enough. So um, we're going to go over these categories just for a little bit. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Now, what I'm going to show you is available in the chat on the Zoom, and it was also available in a link in the sign-up. So what we're seeing here is the score sheet, which is a little bit of an introduction to the category. So seeing as it starts with music, my category, I'll go first. So music is about the song and the arrangement as it was performed, how the performer brings out the musical elements uh, of what they're doing and how they bring that song to life on stage. Now, as you can see at the top, we've got a score range from one to a hundred. And uh, we've got those sort of five boxes uh, aligned under the D, C, B and A levels. So in music, we're looking for uh, consonants, the theme, uh, embellishments, the delivery and the execution. And it's a combination of all of those things that kind of uh, help us get to a music score. And I'll go into a bit more of that later as we look at some videos. Down on the left side of the sheet, uh, we've got some other little boxes to help us think about some of the musical elements of the songs. In the uh, the harmony section here, uh, mentions Barbershop 7th, so we all know that uh, dominant 7th chord sound that we just love to hear in Barbershop, major minor triads, voicings, all that kind of stuff, those real deep musical elements. Um, lots of other stuff just generally relating to the score and how the performer brings out but down at the bottom is one of my favorite boxes, uh, From the Heart with Four Hearts, uh, which you'd think is probably more of a performance category thing, but uh, you know, music people can have feelings too. So uh, we're also looking for that a bit. Um, let's see, whose category is next? Oh, it's performance. It's a me. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, let's talk performance. Uh, so yeah, you can have a look at that, that uh, the top of the score sheet there. Um, is my audio coming across all right? Yep. Okay, cool. It's just my little video wasn't lighting up. Okay, cool. So, but just, you know, just have a look at that, that sheet while I'm describing the category. So if you want a, um, like a, a one sentence kind of a description, I like this. It's the, perf but the performance judge evaluates entertainment within the barbershop style. That pretty much wraps it up right there. I really like that one sentence. Um, and if you're looking at the score sheet, a good way to think of it is that uh, the performance judge identifies visual and vocal interferences and distractions that prevent the group from realizing its maximum effect, effect and audience impact. Uh, and minor errors may or may not be relevant. Uh, the performance judge like, holistically determines uh, those events which, if changed, would result in a measurable improvement in the overall effect. So, I mean, that's kind of saying uh, for example, if you see someone getting emotional in a performance and their voice cracks or something, does, you know, that maybe they missed a note, but in a performance kind of thing, that may have brought the audience in or not, or, you know, it could be either way. So that's kind of uh, performance vibe, and that's 
a lot of when you're talking about performance category, a lot of it is vibe. Uh, but as we go through the uh, performances tonight, you'll be able to slowly um, just work out if something is good and then is it effectively good and you know and that sort of helps you get to maybe if you're messing around in that b category um yeah and then down the down the side there like all these things saying believability is it creative is it genuine how's the energy is suitable to performer is a big one um because if you get that right that can tick a lot of other things um but yeah we'll go through that more as we go through the uh performances Great, thank you, Ash. Now, moving on to the final category, the blue category, singing. Singing. Thanks, thanks, Karen. So, um, so in the singing category, uh, we're judging artistic singing in the barbershop style, uh, listening holistically for ringing in-tune voices that use a free, beautiful, and rich vocal quality, which is um, wonderfully unified and vocally expressive. So that's uh, directly from the, the singing category uh, description. Um, and I'm, I, I'm super excited that all of you are going to be able to do some like practice judging tonight, right? Like that's, that's super fun. Um, and so for the folks that are going to be practice judging in the singing category, what I really recommend you do is look at the five, uh, look at the five sections of the singing score sheet at the top. And what you'll find is, uh, in tune vocal quality frequently units, so unit singing, unit sound, uh, expansion quality, and vocal expression, right? Um, so those are the five sections. And then the degree in which you do that consistently determines D, C, B, or A, right? And it's, and it's actually worth talking about it for a couple of minutes because uh, when I coach and when I coach throughout the world, I, I get lots of questions around, hey, Rob, like, what's that one thing that's going to propel me, propel our group from the category that we're in to the category that we, oh, so, sorry, the, to, to the score that we're in, to the score that we want to get to, right? And fundamentally, my response to them is, is it's not one specific thing. It's essentially doing what you're doing um, much more consistently, right? And that's, uh, for me, when I kind of realized that as a judge and as a performer, um, I think it's made quite a bit of difference in just my approach uh, to how I rehearse and how I sing. So those are the five sections of the singing category. Um, and then down the left there, you've got sort of elements that go into each of the five sections, right? So melodic and harmonic and ha harmonic and intonation, um, several, uh, some, some guidance as to what goes into vocal quality. Um, we want to minimize in this, in this style, in this art form, we, we do want to minimize things like vibrato because it doesn't allow the chords to ring as well. So that's mentioned there. Um, expansion quality. Um, so how much expansion in the sound are we getting? How many overtones um, can we hear? And then what's actually particularly exciting is to see vocal expression here. Um, so what we, the, the evolution of our categories have, have been such that it used to kind of be much more of a, of a singing competition, but now on the singing score sheet, you'll find elements from music and you'll find elements from performance as well. So if you can think about your performance in all three categories, it's generally gonna make your performance and your score better. So that's the singing category. Uh, thanks, Rob. Just, I do have a quick question of my own. In the singing score sheet, there's four blank boxes with nothing in it. What are they for? Ah, yes. Good question, Kieran. So um, when you're providing coaching, uh, sometimes it really helps to um, address the way that the quartet was standing on stage. So those four boxes um, are for you as the judge to fill out to say, hey, so if the tenor was on the left, then usually it'll be like tenor, lead, bass, baritone. Um, but if sometimes the configurations are different, so it allows you to specify what that configuration was. Great, thanks, Rob. 
All right, so those are the score sheets and uh, the categories attached to them. Uh, for those of you playing at home, we're going to be looking through some videos. Use the score sheets as a reference. Come up with a number. You can either send it to us in the, in the chat or you can just keep it to yourself and see how close you were and use these as a guide. So you've got your three categories, singing, performance and music. Um, they're all equally weighted. So uh, pick one and have some fun. Now, I think we're ready for our first contestant. Can we have the doors closed, please? Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's been I a while since we've had I that. I, know. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to that. And, and at the end, we're going to have the contest administrators come past and tell us that we've got two minutes. So, <laughs> uh, and that's, that's something we probably should mention. The contest mm. administrators are a non-scoring judge. Uh, I guess this is more about uh, scoring and performance stuff, but uh, contest administrators uh, do all the heavy lifting so that we can write and eat M&Ms. Out of a little bowl. <laughs> so um, now, Dan Beckett, I believe you're queuing it up. So could we have the first video, please, for us all to have a look at? How do you in the crowd get them to roar out Decoy. How can they see with sequins in their eyes? With sequins in their eyes. What if your hinges all are rusting? What if, in fact, you're just disgusting? Talk about boring them, give them the thrill like Roger is giving them, and everyone will know you're fibbing them. Give them the old Myron siren. Yeah. Stand, don't do much, sing low and be a putt. They'll never hear the truth above the roar. Just listen to a roar, be like Mike, and smile like a dummy. Ding dong, fat, so grandpa, mommy. And they'll love us all for We gotta do more Just give me all Sing it faster, faster, faster And faster, faster And give them an act that's sure to win the gold We all agree third place is getting all given Misdirection, flirting, dirt and dog Is that a sweet song? When you're in trouble, go into your dance Hey! Oh, guys, <laughs> when you're in trouble, do a head routine. Yeah. Guys, I'm gonna... When you're in trouble, break a water main. Yeah, that actually happened, I think. You can play on balance, still let them go. We got no talents. Razzle dazzle them, stun and stagger them. Days and dizzy them, fake and fool with them. And they'll make you a razzle dazzle.
right, who wants to go first? <laughs> uh, I'll go first. No worries. So, um, wow, right. Uh, so m many of you probably know who that quartet is. Uh, so they're, they're doing a lot of things right. Um, they're consistently in tune. They've got excellent vocal quality. Um, there's a lot of unit sound. One of the interesting I, things I notice about unit sound is they're obviously very funny and, and, and I'm sure uh, Ash will address that. But if you, as a singing judge, if you kind of look down away from the, the video for a second and listen really intently to between what happens between the shtick, right? So there's like a joke and there's a pause and then people are laughing and then they start up the singing again. And there's that moment where it's just, it's got like, sometimes there's a little sync error or just a little out of tune. Um, and there's just an opportunity to just kind of make that better, right? Um, I mean, there's, they're singing, uh, I'm not gonna give away the score yet, but they're, 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 they've got a high score. So like finding these little things are going to minimize some of those distractions. The other thing that I, if I was working with this quartet, the other thing I'd really do is, um, like the bass is super consistent and super accurate, which is amazing. Um, what I do is have the lead and the bass um, try and match some of the resonance, especially when the lead goes a little higher in, in his range. Um, you'll notice also there's a little bit of an alignment thing where his, his neck goes up considerably, his chin goes up considerably. And so I'd kind of work with him a little bit on that to see if we can get a little bit more activation between the lead and the bass. And then the final thing from a singing category is I'd work with the tenor. And uh, uh, I mean, it's got a great sort of mixed slash falsetto kind of voice, but just allowing the tenor voice to get a little bit more on the voice um, so that they, they can, so that he can really lock into the sound that the other three parts are making um, and give them a little bit more expansion, a little bit more ring. Ooh. Great. Thanks, Rob. Um, I'll uh, jump in with the music category there. So uh, you hit a couple of, uh, and I guess this is where the category crossover is, but um, tuning wise, really in tune. And I think the thing that stops uh, me from giving this, you know, uh, full marks is just some of those those small things coming back in not 100% being together. But when you're when you've got a quartet at this level, you're really looking for like the little little reasons to not give them 100 points. Um, they had a song which was very clearly barbershop, lots of typical barbershop chords and movements in there. Um, they uh, delivered it well, it was very well executed. Uh, and one of the things in the music category we talk about is theme, and this one has a, a comic theme. So uh, they use the music to punctuate the comedy and uh, let that flow through. Um, one thing that I thought they did really well is they sped up and slowed down at different points as a unit. And that is something that uh, for some groups doesn't always go too well. So not just being in time, being in time with four people and then taking that timing and turning it up quite a bit. So they did that really well. Um, but that's kind of where I'm thinking from the uh, music category. Ash, how about you? Yeah, so performance-wise, like, I was listening to what Rob was saying, I was like, oh, I'm so glad I'm not a singing judge. <laughs> like, like, having, <laughs> like, being able to pick out those things, I was just sitting there going, this is great. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and as, sitting there in, in the performance seat, like, if something doesn't quite come across, then you'll look at, well, oh, why didn't that work? So, um, so I'm not necessarily looking for their you know little singing things or sync stuff that might be there i'm just looking at that overall package and and i was just like right up in that you know that enthralling kind of uh description description there um where you know i just found myself i just didn't want to look away right and didn't want to miss anything that they were doing um and then I, you know you get to the end and you know we look up the score and like yeah maybe it's not 100 but why not it's like okay why not and i was thinking about maybe the song sounded a lot the same the whole time, as much as they put differences in there, then they put energy into it. Like maybe it's not a 100 vehicle, perhaps that kind of vibe. Um, 
and you know maybe they did the best you can with that particular song. Um, that's you know like you know you're looking at what could they possibly do better. Um, there was a little move with the hats that if they had like really nailed that, it would have just been super slick and. And there was this little distraction, you know, what we were talking about before. Um, you know, you're finding those little distractions that take you out for just that second. Um, and, you know, the speed is a decoy. Like, the pronunciation of that sort of doesn't help the joke. Uh, when you would normally say, you know, speed is a decoy. You know, you'd say it differently. So when you pronounce things differently, it's kind of, it can be hard to pick up the joke. And you're like, well, what would I miss? And then while well, you think about what you missed, you miss the next one. And... So yeah, that's just the, you know, nitpicky stuff. But it was awesome. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, do we want to attach a number to it? Yeah. Look, I was gonna, I was gonna say maybe our, our participants. Um, and there's there's lots of you out there. I'm I'm very keen to think uh, to 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 get your input. So in the chat, maybe if you could list out um, what category uh, you're you're scoring. Um, so either performance, music, or singing, and then just a li list a number between one and 100 um, as a percentage. Um, so if you could please do that now for uh, this group, that'd be great. <laughs> and if you're not 100% comfortable giving a number, just uh, give fine. it an A, B, C, or D. Yeah, that helps too. Levels. Yeah, that's fine too. Oh, I am. The scores are starting to come in. Now, this is where we need the contest administrators because none of us know how to do maths. <laughs> so figuring out an average is just not going to happen. Mm. I'll give it a couple of, couple of minutes here. While we're, yeah, while we're doing this, like, um, we, the, the, the numbers across, so you might have said this, I might have not been paying attention because, you know, when the music judge starts talking, I generally tune out. But... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that explains a lot about your uh, own performances there, Ash, doesn't it? It sure does. <laughs> um, it's just because our categories can be so similar some, a lot of the time, you know, and I, you know, I have to put it in simpler ways. But anyway, we, yeah, across the top is how you work out your score, right? And then that stuff down the left is sort of things you're looking at. Are they doing that well? And so it helps you if you get to t talk to the group about where you're going to comment and what kind of things you're going to say and, you know, that's where that stuff helps. So uh, for that group, I was just going down through like believability, big tick, creative tick, genuine tick. You know, the energy was there, suitable to them. You know, I was just putting ticks through down everywhere, and like and then sometimes big circles going there. Yeah, that was exactly right. So yeah, well, let's have a look. Let's see if we've got some scores now. I've, I've well, one of the bit. one of the interesting things I think with a group like that is can, can you imagine um, being a judge in the pit uh, scoring that group? And then having to give them a vowel in the eval later on. <laughs> well, I, I know that uh, our know good someone. friend Alex Morris actually <laughs> had that experience with that particular group on the year that they happened to win the gold. Ah, maybe Alex will uh, come on and tell us about what he what he scored the group. <laughs> Well, I, I've had I've had a similar experience myself. I haven't had to give an evaluation, but um, I've been shadow judging uh, on two different contests and both times I saw the international chorus champions sing their winning set and both times you just kind of go, oh, I'm really oh. glad I don't have to talk to these guys after <laughs> I say that. Um, well, it looks like we've got a, got a couple of scores. Um, now, one thing uh, that's, uh, that might make a bit of a difference is that we are listening to this over the internet. We are watching this online. So mm. it's not going to be quite the same as the uh, room. And in the video, we mm. actually have a reference score, which is the score that came from the guys on the ground. So they're going to have uh, a bit of a different viewpoint, but we'll probably still be pretty close anyway. So we've got, uh, let's see, a 93, an 88, a 91, uh, a 93, a 94, a 91, an 83 and a 90. So Very it seems like everyone's sort of agreeing A level. <laughs> and I think we can pretty much say, yep, that's, that's A level. Tick. <laughs> <laughs> um, interestingly enough, from David Wellespoon, I just want to call, call that score out, uh, 91. So David, when I scored this performance, uh, before looking at the reference score, I actually scored it exactly at a 91. Um, 
and the big reveal is the singing score, the reference score for the singing uh, category was 93.2 to slightly higher than what I scored. But yeah, good job, David. I myself had this at about a 92 when I watched it before looking at the reference score. And uh, so uh, David had music at 93, so that's pretty good. Um, uh, we had a uh, singing music 83 from Roy, so uh, I don't think the competitors would be too happy with that, but you know, you hear <laughs> what you hear. Um, but uh, the reference score for music was uh, 94.6. So uh, just a little bit higher, and I guess maybe some of the problems I have were possibly to do with the quality of the recording coming through the mm. internet rather than uh, what was in the room. But yeah, still pretty much in that high A area for quartets. Ash? Uh, the performance reference score was 94.8, and that's exactly what I had because I accidentally saw the score before. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, but when I start with my sheet, um, I'm always circling roughly where they're sitting and then that then i'd use all the stuff to narrow it down later but you know it's definitely up there all right well cool. that's our first that's our first song we thought we'd start off with something uh really cool now let's let's go and have a look at another video um dan could you please share the next one off the list and uh just as a bit of a forewarning for everyone we uh might jump in and uh call early we don't usually jump out and say that we've heard enough uh <laughs> when we're judging in real life but uh you know we don't have all the time in the world so uh yeah we might stop the video halfway through and if you have any questions feel free to ask them let's have the next video Uh, let's hold it there for a second, Dan. There you go. I'm unmuted. Somehow I got muted. Uh, so we've got a chorus of 14 guys there. Uh, they're on stage. They're giving it a go. Um, my first concern is that I'm hearing either not four parts or more than four parts. Mm -hmm. So there, there's there's some interesting stuff happening there. I, um, yeah, it's a it's a bit hard uh, when you've got this type of group. Uh, guys, what are you what are you hearing in the sound? Ash, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, my I mean my my big thing for this is that just tuning is the big distraction. Um, so once I, you know, there's a thing where we don't want to keep crushing someone because they're making that one mistake. You know, once they've, that's the mistake of the song probably, um, is just getting that tuning. Um, so then I start looking for, okay, what are they, what are they doing? All right. Um, because who knows, maybe they sing this fine in rehearsal and they've come to stage and it's just something's gone wrong. All right. So you don't want to just assume that, um, that they just sing out of tune all the time. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, they're with the director, you know, there's, there's um, a lot of people with a, that are into the song and they're, you know, they're having, they're giving it their go, they're smiling. Um, yeah, without talking about scores and stuff, it's uh, hard to talk about exactly where I'm at. But uh, yeah, I didn't have a lot of stuff uh, written down for this group because it's just, you know, just get that tuning under control and, um, and we can go places. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree, Ash. I, I think one of the things that I do probably with this group to start with is ask them if this is a new song for them. Uh, is Was the performance on stage uh, indicative of how they normally perform, right? So was, was there perhaps some type of um, interference or anything like that? And just got to get a gauge first around what the response is from there. And I think that would help me with where I take the eval or the, the session with them. Um, and if, if it is a new song, then I'd say, okay, like it just more time in the saddle, maybe some uh, eval tracks, um, maybe if, just checking if they have learning tracks so that they can learn the words and notes. Uh, if it's a song that they've been doing for a while and the performance is indicative of rehearsal, then I would ask them about uh, how they rehearse, how they learn songs, and to just kind of share some feedback that I didn't really hear four part chords, right? Um, and, and mostly it was about uh, lead bass, sometimes tenor, lead bass tenor, and then very, very seldom did we actually hear baritone in that, in that sound. And so the question for me would be, are there any baritones singing? If there are baritones singing, are they singing their part or are they perhaps confused in singing the lead part or the bass part? Um, and I just think just having a baritone in the sound would increase their score. Uh, so it's probably- And that would also increase its score from a music category point of view as well. And one thing that can happen, especially with um, uh, newer singers who are new to harmony singing, maybe their entire singing experience is just, you know, singing with the radio in the car. Uh, when you've got other sounds around you, it can be very easy to gravitate and latch onto a sound, which might not be what you're actually meant to be doing. Uh, so if they've got some guys up there and this is, you know, their first weekend with the chorus, you can very much expect them to kind of lean on some of the strongest singers. All right, we've got, we've got some scores. We've got some scores and uh, some have even put some justifications for the scores. And uh, just uh, for the other guys with me who are presenting, if you're wanting to message the people, you have to select all panelists and attendees. At the moment, you're just messaging us when you're trying to message them. So uh, uh, particularly you, Rob, you've done it like three times now. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll adjust. No worries, that's, that's my eval of your performance. Thank you, Thank uh, you very much. So uh, we've got uh, Nick Ellis is saying music 40 because rarely consonant. Now that's a good job there, Nick, for using uh, category language. That's awesome. So 40 puts us at the end of the D category. So C starts at 41. So 40 is the highest D level score you can go. If I'm looking at my score sheet, uh, the words it uses rarely consonant. Yeah, that sound wasn't together for most of it. Ambiguous themes. Was it a rhythm song? Was it a ballad? It was kind of a bit of everything. Weak embellishments, awkward delivery, poor execution. And I think those are all good terms. It's real within that upper D category for this song. Um, if we have a look at David, music 10, singing 13, and performance 93 for colourful shirts. Um, <laughs> Close. Um, and uh, Tav saying performance forty eight. All right, uh, let's uh, let's go around us three. Uh, Ash, where did you have it? Um, so we're we're down in the um, lower forties. Uh, the ref reference score wise, it's forty four, and I was I was circling around that same sort of area. Um, yeah, because it's just if you go down in there, it's in the weak to acceptable sort of range. And in that, it's just got some entertainment, some audience, you know. And when it says some, you can have a lot of some or not much some. So down the bottom of that is like, is where you're going. Okay. So occasionally, it's, it's all right. And you can look at some faces and go, oh, that guy's having a good time, you know. And it was bright it, as, as, as much as that 93 is a joke because they had colorful shirts. They, you know they've put in an effort, you know, and they've come out with a bit of a plan. And so that's going to brighten your day a little bit. Robert? Yeah. Um, so I guess from a singing category uh, perspective, anything that's uh, less than 50 uh, is considered that 
we 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 potentially don't want to have a a, a public performance uh, if a group is singing below fifty, and which is it's an, it's it's maybe a bit of an internal thing. Um, so, you know, I would I would have it probably somewhere between thirty and forty. Um, but really the lack of chords, there's this lack of four parts is, is very difficult. So we ended up with a, re a reference score of 34 in the singing category. Yeah, um, I, I was pretty low myself. I mean, especially with so much of that not tuning and parts being absent. And uh, we also had sections where people weren't entirely together. You know, we had a couple of different ideas of what the lead and a couple of different ideas of what the bass notes are, which really muddies the sound from a music standpoint. So I had them, I had them at about a um, 35 and the reference score for music was 32. All right. Should we move to the next yep. video? Let's, let's move straight on. So Dan Beckett, let's have the next video. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, definitely different to the, the last one. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in on my music category. The first thing I noticed is they just went straight into the song, no tune-up chord. And that is, uh, for some groups, great. They can just do that. For other groups, I always think it's worth just doing a tune-up chord. You get one free chord on the stage that... Uh, that I'm not allowed to touch. I'll still write down about it, whether it's a good one or a bad one, but it doesn't affect your score. So take that opportunity, use a tune up chord, and that might sort of just start you off a little better. That's, uh, um, yeah, that's where I, I'm cool. at for my first thoughts. Rob? For singing, um, I, I felt like the lead was quite, quite overpowered. Uh, the leads in the, in the chorus were, were overpowered. So I would maybe just take a moment to figure out how many people were singing lead, make sure the balance was right across the chorus. Um, and then the other thing I noticed was that the basses and the baritones, their resonance changes a lot um, as they go through the scale. So maybe just a little bit of work with them on that. Those are two main things. Yeah, uh, Ash, if you're trying to talk, your mic's off. Thank you, thank you for that. I was trying to talk. <laughs> so the funny thing, because stopping it early, this song actually got better uh, as it as it progressed. Um, so, uh, but yeah, once again, like tuning and the singing, singing is uh, is the biggest distraction for me. Um, but most of the chorus was into it. There was an element of charm about it. Um, so we. A, we'll just jump. We'll just jump into the, my score. It's around that that low fifties, mid fifties. The reference score is fifty four. Um, if you look in that, you know, it's more of that acceptable some entertainment stuff. That that, that those kind of words, you know, they they're kind of just singing a song, but they're enjoying it, 
and it's you know it gets more in tune as, it, as the song goes along and it's a you know it's recognizable you you can sort of get what the song is and then you might got leave whistling it you know as you leave and you know they're having a good time you know that's kind of that the hallmarks of that kind of score i think yeah this this one for me was definitely up around a, a similar area one thing that really stood out to me was this very mechanical delivery they hit this tempo which i personally found it to be a little bit on the slow side da, 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 and a bit of a drag i think this if this was a little bit faster they could have brought a bit more life into the sound and use more of those musical elements so i was around a 53 for that uh rob where are you um so when i listened to it i was actually more around 50 51 um but the reference score was for singing was uh 55 oh reference score for music was 52 ash yeah 54 54 Cool. And we've got some people in the comments. We've got some in the 40s, some in the uh, 50s. Ah, oh, Ian, 52, right on. Uh, Nick, 51 in music. Yeah, that's pretty close. Uh, Tab, 53 for performance. Yeah, we've got a lot of close scores there. Yeah. The other thing to realise about uh, judging is it's not just about giving the score. We also have to then justify these this score to these people afterwards and tell them why we score them that way and what we can do with that and where we go. So when you're thinking of your score, it's also helpful to think of how can I help this group? How can I help them get to the next level or help them hear what it is that they're doing and yeah, just get better. Cool, let's, uh, let's keep it rolling and move on to the next video. We got some nice stuff here. This is our first quartet of the evening. Um, so, smiling through, uh, it was a lovely tune. The first thing I noticed about this is that uh, they're really putting a lot of thought into, from a music category perspective, the theme of this. And the theme is they're trying to tell the story. Uh, it, it feels a little bit contrived. And, uh, Ash, I'm kind of jumping into your category a bit here. But, um uh, yeah, it's, uh, they're definitely doing some nice stuff with shooting. There were some really, really nice chords in there, uh, but they weren't always at the same level. So it's, uh, once again, that consistency thing that can bring you up or down a level. Uh, Rob? Yes, yeah, that's a great point. I would, that's the first thing that I wrote on my score sheet, that there's a, a big variation um, between the, the stuff that they're doing really well and the stuff they could be doing better. So I would probably work on the lead and the bass in particular and get their sound to be a lot more matched um, for this particular quartet. Um, the ref, uh, we, are we still scoring? The scores are still going. Okay, I'll let the scores go. Ash, over to you. Oh, yeah, okay. So um, 
for me, it, we could have almost stopped that video anywhere after as much as you wanted because then, because from like say maybe the first 10 seconds is about the same as the three minutes or however long the song goes for. My main thing is that it's very samey throughout. Like, um, but having said that, you know, uh, the, everyone seems to know their notes, they're singing them. It's all at the same time. You know, there's some, there's a, there's definitely a plan somewhere. The lead's got some idea of what, what the, um, the message is. And, um, the others are also trying to get in and you might see me doing this with my hands a lot because this is what they started resorting to a lot. It's just a lot of meaningless kind of hands trying to get their message across. Um, so it's there. Um, and it's a, it is, a, yeah, it's a very much, if you, if you want to look at those scores, we've still got them coming in, but I'll just jump in. Um, it's, it's right in that good and competent kind of level where it's, there's nothing too much wrong, but there's um, so much room to go forward and make it interesting. So it's like it's banging that, that, that classic solid 64 area that we like to talk about. Yeah, that that is banging that solid sixty four area. Personally, I had that at a I had it at a sixty three, um, and we've got some scores ranging from the high fifties up into we've even got some in the seventies. Um, but uh, for the music reference score for this was a sixty four. Uh, uh, Rob, uh, so actually, this in this case the the singing score was actually a little lower, sixty one, um, and that's that's indicative of that lack of unit sound. Great. Um, now there was a question about, uh, someone asked us what is the difference between the reference score and our scores? So the reference score uh, is either coming from the last judges school where they, everyone scored that and it shows you, well, this is sort of what everyone came up with because, you know, we sometimes update the scores to make sure that uh, we're all updating our skills as time goes by, or it's the score from that actual contest from uh, in the pit. So the scores you're getting are through, from us are through the headphones. The scores that we talk about as the reference score is from uh, others. <laughs> all right, let's uh, move on to the next video. Oh, uh, we have, what was the performance reference score from TAV? What was the score? 68.5. Uh, what? Uh, Ash, what was the... So, what so was that the, group was uh, 64. 64. Oh, 64. 64. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. Cool. Let's have the next video, please. Paper Moon, it's, uh, it's a favourite of many groups. Uh, 
for me, that was loud. That was two different types of loud. And in the music category, we'll, we want to see a variety of uh, dynamics and a lot of flow between them. And they kind of just hit their volume and they're, yep, we're at this volume. And uh, that's great, but uh, I like a bit more variation. Then at the end, they added some variation and got even louder. So uh, that's my first takeaway from that. Uh, what about you guys? Yeah, I I actually um, that this is an interesting thing where the the uh, categories overlap. So I wrote down forced singing, um, which is very similar, right? So I think they've got the words in the notes. Um, they kind of know how to sing. If they relax into the sound and allow this the ring to happen, I think they would score much higher. Um, I scored them a seventy one, uh, and the reference score was uh, sixty nine. Uh, I should say I scored them at a 70 and the reference score for music was a 72. There you go. Um, it's funny you guys use the word force. I've got, I wrote the word forcing as well. Uh, they're kind of forcing those, that rhythm down our throats. Like, um, but, you know, very competent. They came in with a plan. We could see the plan quite clearly. Um, uh, and they just, yeah, they really smashed that plan in our face. Um, but that, that's bang on that sort of B level uh, reference score seventy one, and I had it. I had, I had it a couple of points higher, but you know I'm a nice guy. You're the the candy man of the panel. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it was interesting you mentioned the tempo. They hit that swing beat, and yeah, it felt like a very forced swing. Whereas uh, you know you could get a lot more out of that piece if you went for more of a relaxed da 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 yeah. rather da 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 kind of swing. <laughs> and uh, that's something I do as a music judge. If you're doing something that is a rhythm piece or a swing piece, I will do little drumming movements to myself to make sure you're in time. I got one little thing is that. Um... If you, if you want to hark back a couple of weeks to uh, Dan Milgate and my and uh, our, our comedy little thing, um, the little muslin tree joke that they put in there, that's a really, that's probably a good example of rehearsal funny versus performance funny. Mm. Just if you want to reference that, that's just to keep that in mind. That's a good one. Actually, um, after watching that, I looked up what a muslin tree is. It's just a tree made of paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we have a, a quick question for all of the uh, attendees. Um, we've got a few more uh, groups to, to, to go through, um, but we wanted to check with you if you want to go a little bit over. Um, I think we were scheduled to finish at around 8.30, which is in a, a couple of minutes. Um, but if you would like to go a little bit longer so that we can judge a few more groups, um, just let us know via the chat. And while we're doing that, let's go to the next group. Let's do it. Darling, I've been dreaming of a land not far away where we can settle down and live a life of ease both night and day. Not too far from here, a land of sweet simplicity. Sit tight and have a listen, we'll tell you all about it. I know a place, pretty as pie. How would the river bend hits up with the end of the sky? It's left in Nebraska, and over a crest. On a little patch of heaven, away out west. Everything's green. You know what I mean, what I mean, darling, it's quite the sweetest sight that you've ever done seen. I done seen nothing much out there, just life at its best, on a little patch of heaven, away out west, out west. There's bees by the dozen, are buzzing real peaceful. Every blue bonnet, dump gone, it smells nice and that, deep in the tumbling tumbleweed. Slows, on down, slows down the mattress speed on my tiny hat. Very cool. Very yeah, cool. Ve very cool. <laughs> um, now that's, 
this is going to bring me to one of my uh, parts of the singing ca uh, score sheet, which I haven't actually talked about yet, where there's a box that says suitable to the performer, question mark. And uh, every now and then uh, you come across a group doing a song that might be a little bit out of their league. And um, if I were to be working with this group, I would say like, you know, this is the type of song that people love to sing. And you can completely understand why someone would really enjoy singing that. But um, I think they'd probably be better off going with something a little less challenging, something that they can uh, get their hands around just a little bit easier, uh, rather than going for what is a gold medalist chart. And uh, yeah, don't ever be fooled by thinking that if because a gold medalist d did it, uh, you'll get a gold medal doing it. I've made that mistake <laughs> myself. I think we all have at one point. So uh, yeah, choose choose your charts carefully. Yeah, yeah. I, I may I may have sung with the bass, um, who may be on this a uh, 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 web stream right now, who may have suggested the song just purely hypothetically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so look, this is this is actually a really really exciting quartet, and if I was working with these guys, I would be super excited. Um, they they have a lot of potential. Um, so you have a bass that has a lot of consistency, um, very smooth, quite accurate. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a lead voice that's just got this beautiful crispness to it. It's like, oh, it's just delightful to listen to. Um, however, it varies a lot, right? And, and the lead voice has this, this beauty to it. And then it goes from there to very different. And so I would work with the lead to say, let's get it more consistent. Um, in particular, in the lower part of his range, I feel like he's trying to do something to make it bigger or louder or something. Because the high part of his range, right, he has this like beautiful tone, crystal clear. Um, so I'd say, hey, in the lower part of your range, like chill out a little bit. The two other quick things is baritone um, is quite pitchy when he goes through his uh, passaggio. So I'd work with him on that. Um, and... Uh, the tenor just to just to feed the sound and find opportunities to feed the sound a little bit more so um let's go with the scores and we can we can tell you what the scores were go ahead so yeah so i for me it was um yeah right in that lower the 74 ish range um because you can you can see the effort and by the end of, like they got through it they got through it they didn't crash and burn they got through it they they like, yeah, that's, they got through it. And there wasn't a lot wrong, but so much room for improvement, right? Um, and you, yeah, you could see like if I was working with them, I'd quickly go into like, uh, you can tell the lead got, the nerves got a bit of the better of him. Um, so I'd just be going into look, are you singing about this place or are you singing this song on international stage? You know, that's the kind of approach I would probably take um, in that, you know, that performance. Uh, way <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you make a good point going onto the international stage is a pretty harrowing thing and uh sometimes uh the battle plan doesn't survive contact with the enemy so uh yeah you can you can step out there with all the best intentions and and have a have a bad day um for that one i was around a 73 and uh let me see what was a reference score for music category uh, it was uh, seventy five point two. Yep. So I was a, I was a little I was a little bit low, and I think it was some of those musical elements, you know, that 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 just a little bit short, and just it felt a bit unstable. Yeah. In this singing category, um, we kind of regard that seventy six around seventy five seventy six is kind of international standard, right? Um, and I actually had these guys right on 76. Um, so I, I thought, actually, I would love to see that on the international stage. Um, but uh, the reference score was 74.2, so just under international. Cool. Well, I think we've uh, got that. We had a few scores from the audience, uh, ranging all the way from 87, high 70s. So... Um, yeah, a few people out there dishing out the candy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Nothing uh, wrong with that. No, nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Because um, there's just as many people putting coal in the stockings as well. Uh, let's move on to uh, the next track. Wait, 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 wait,
was cooking Cause after all he's gotta grow big and tall Holy poly corn taters Hungry every minute of the day of the day Roly poly now he now on a biscuit As long as he can chew it it's okay he can eat an apple pie and never even bat an eye. Oh, he likes anything from soup to hay. To hay. Roly poly, daddy's little fatty. Bet he's gonna be a man someday. Hey. Roly poly, scrambled eggs for breakfast. Bread and jelly 20 times a day. Roly poly. It's a hearty dinner. He needs lots of strength to sing and play. To sing and play. He up and down to do the chores and runs both way through all the stores. He works up such an appetite that way. Oh, every day. Roly poly, daddy's little fatty. Fatty's gonna be a man someday. He needs his fill and sleeps the night away. Roly poly, he won't stop for nothing. Bet he's gonna be a man someday. I bet he's gonna be a man. Bet he's gonna be a man. Yes, he's gonna be a man someday. So, um, I'll throw to someone else first for a change. Who wants to go? I'll go. So, um, for this, is, uh, this is kind of similar to what I was saying to the previous group. There's, you know, uh, it's hard to find things that are wrong, right? And this is, this is the exciting part of get, about getting into this area. Like, you just talk, talking about how good can stuff be now. Um, so, my first comment is it's all very good, right? Um, and then if you get a bit deeper into the song, how much is there to get really excited about in this kind of song? You know, it's, it's kind of almost a novelty kind of song without being real funny. Um, so, but yeah. Uh, so that's when I start looking into how believable can they be with this? Like, what are they singing about? Who are they singing about? Who, who is this person? That's, that's my main question, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so I'm just like, yeah, could there could there have possibly been more changes in storytelling somehow um, in the visual, like singing wise, I thought like it sounded like there was a lot of stuff going on, but I don't know if they could have just given me more because I, you know, they're ex executing their plan really, really, really well, which gets you right up, right up, up, up those scores to uh, close to A. Cool. <laughs> nice. Um, so for the singing category, um, uh, there's lots of stuff that I had on my score sheet here, but the one thing that I'll, uh, that, that I caught that I'll leave you with is what's happening to the singing during the solos, right? There's like all of this cool solo stuff, but if you kind of zone the solo out for a second and think chords, they're actually not there. And I think that actually prevents them from being in the A category, um, uh, so I would just work on, hey, soloist, stand over here. Let's hear the chords uh, and make sure that the, you've still got chords behind the solo. Because there's like three or four solos in this in this song, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then I was kind of curious. There's this item on on, on the singing squashy called flow, and sometimes I interpret that to be things like tempo and what the flow of the song is. And I and I found in this in the quick parts they kind of lost a bit of tempo. So I'm keen to hear what uh, Kieran said about that. Well, yes, the, the tempo did have its uh, moments of inconsistency. But the, the, the thing that my mind sort of like really grabbed onto was they put so much uh, work and character into those embellishments to the point where I was starting to feel, all right, this is a, this is a bit much. 
we have embellishments in the in the arrangement those little things that you're meant to do something with um and it just sort of felt to me like the uh musical equivalent of putting tomato sauce on a steak um <laughs> you know just a, just a just a bit too much i think they could they could dial it back a bit and focus more on the on the core sound it's a cool progression it's got a great groove make it more about that rather than sort of this uh comedic element i think it's one of those songs that it's kind of cool enough that if they did it well you would sort of not even really listen to the lyrical content in there. Uh, for me, I had that at around a 77 because there were some great chords, some uh, great lock and ring there. There was some show of dynamics, could have probably been more, but then again, that's probably also this. Um, so yeah, that was a 77 for me and the uh, reference score for music category was 78. Uh, singing score, uh, I actually scored that a 76, um, but the reference score was a 78. So this was an international level performance. Yeah, my circle is around sort of the 77 to 81 area, and this the reference score is 78. Great. All right. Uh, before we move on to the next group, uh, let's have a quick look. We have a lot of people up in the 80s up there. And um, uh, this is something that can happen when you have sort of a massive sort of change between the levels of groups, you have to kind of steady yourself so you don't overcorrect or undercorrect or something like that as we go from, you know, we've seen all the way from the 30s, now we're up into the 70s, we started in the 90s. Uh, so that can be a bit of an issue. So just keep that in mind. Uh, another thing is that if you want to be a judge, you also have to uh, compete at least once every three years. That's in the rule. That's why I have the next video. Tell me 
trip wow. down memory lane. Blast from the past. Yeah. Oh, so uh, that was a great trip. Um, now, look, from a music category perspective, I can just uh, 100% say that all the problems in that were uh, Ian Mulholland and Dan Milgate. <laughs> uh, that was definitely all there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's always interesting trying to judge something that you yourself have been in because, uh, you know, we, we were there. Um, oh, and look, someone's given us 100, 100, and 200. Uh, I, <laughs> what a spoon. What a spoon. You should be in the pit, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we sing, you should be in the pit. Uh, but uh, getting, getting serious about that, there were some really great uh, unit sounds in there. There were some distractions, but for me, this is right on that tipping point where I feel like there's more A-level stuff happening than there is not. Mm. So that, for, for me puts it like right at the A level. If someone says, you know, what's exactly an AB1? That is exactly an AB1, <laughs> at, at least to me. You know, there was there was some great dynamic stuff there. There was uh, some really great movement. The tempo was solid the whole way through. But at the same time, you can still hear individuals sticking out and you can still hear some uh, stuff where a, a section will slide and one person will just be that a little bit late. Right? That kind of stuff. That's, that's what puts me there. Ash? Yeah, um, yeah, because like I'm, just, you know, it's right on that cusp of that A, that beta A around that 79 to 81 kind of area. Um, very effective, going into engaging. Like if you look at the whole package, I thought it built really well. It had a really nice still start, and then it finished that same way. Then it had a big old ramp up in the middle, and that's and that big old ramp up is kind of where the where the problems were, where. Um, Everyone was showing the rhythm, but a little too much, a little unnaturally. Um, and some people were showing it in a natural way and getting into the song and others were just going, I got to keep this tempo kind of, you know, there's a bit of a mismatch going on. So that's where that kind of thing. So there was a lot of good stuff going on from a lot of the, a lot of the guys and then, but you'd see it when people would come out or get distracted or whatever, you know, so that's what, that's where that, you know, elements of a, in the high B's kind of stuff happens. Does that make yeah. sense? Mm -hmm. It does make sense. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I was in the sort of same category. I was uh, around that 82 mark. Um, and it's actually really interesting watching this uh, years later because you get kind of a completely different perspective on things. Um, and what I do with this group is I would work with the bases in particular. I felt like um, the lead tombo, the lead sort of placement was in that sort of fairly uh, forward bright kind of position. And the basses sometimes had this kind of low reachy kind of sound. So I would just work on getting that lead bass unit sound happening. Um, I, I made a note here that said no reaching and grabbing at the low note spaces. Um, and there was a f quite a few times that happens, especially on the word babe. So yeah, that's how, what I would work with. But the my score was 82 and the reference score was 82 for singing. And uh, the, the interesting thing about this is the uh, uh, when we actually did this, we got, was 81, 81 flat or 81 point something? Anyway, the point is it was an 81. And now the uh, because at the judges' schools, they go through and they redo some of these old videos. Now the average reference score has... Uh, gone down a bit so uh not everything gains value with age unfortunately <laughs> and so just like the cheap wine in my house it's not getting better <laughs> but uh you know just hold on to the score that you get on the day that's the real one right uh yeah but uh look we've got some great scores in in the comments um and a lot of people seem to be right around that cusp area of mm. uh the high b to entry of the a level um and we do have a comment from tab saying yes it is a bit hard to um gauge the visual elements uh ash do you have any recommendations for how someone can gauge the visual elements while trying to watch a video from someone else's computer through the internet <laughs> um you've sort of got to yeah you gotta forgive any kind of uh sync <laughs> um, and just try and pick out see if you can catch someone's face going are they into it and, and then see if you can see that someone next to them, are they also into it? And are they, you know, doing the same message as the song, roughly? Um, but that's, yeah, it's really hard. But um, 
Yeah, because I saw Tav, your score was was a lower and lower in the seventies, and I was like, yeah, that makes sense for what that looked like. Mm. Um, I'll be right with you there, but um, yeah, if you watch it on a on a smoother version, it's a bit nicer. But there's not much you can do. But the preference score, by the way, was seventy nine for performance. All right, great. Uh, let's let's move on to our next video. Now, is this our last video, or it's our we... final video? Yeah. yeah. So it's our final video for tonight. So um, I think let's do this one a little differently. When this video ends, we will say nothing. <laughs> you in the chat will score, and you will just write down a number and. Uh, uh, please actually write down a little bit of a justification with it. What is it? Why are you giving it that particular number? What elements of the particular category, uh, you know, stick out to you as the reason why? Give us all that detail, um, and then we'll tell you what we think. Mm -hmm. All right, let's have the next video. Thank you, Dan. your scores in the chat write down a number write down a category write down some reasons why um and while we wait does anyone know a good joke mm -hmm. there's a uh, two fish in a tank <laughs> one says to the other what was yeah. it 
Oh, you, you, okay. Uh, yeah, two fish in a tank. One says to the other, hey, do you know how to drive this thing? Classic. That's, I, I did ask for a good joke, but okay. <laughs> That's the first one I get to think about. <laughs> All right, we've got, a, we've got a couple of coming in. Ah, oh, got a 91, an 84, and a 94, 75. A 75? That's good. I think Tav's uh, adjusted for the lag. Yeah, and yeah. He's just added, added points on to what it might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, you've got your lag score and just add 10 or something. It should roughly work. <laughs> I like Chris's uh, justification. Just a, an interesting thing is that you know, um, in that in that last video, we've also uh, there were two judges who have come out to BHA in recent years, and that's one thing about uh, judging that uh, you know is you've always got to keep in mind is that the people you're judging are often your friends and people that you care about. So um, you've got to you've got to be able to look someone in the eye and tell them, "Yep, you sang at this level," and and mean it and know that you've done the right. Part of your job yeah and on that kind of thought as well we've been saying some things like you know oh that they, they rammed that tempo down our throats and stuff you would never you're less likely to go into an eval and say that to someone <laughs> um you these, would say these, it to me but you wouldn't say yeah. it to a stranger oh absolutely um but it's a, it's the kind of things that as a judge you just got it because you got to do it so quick so you just got to be quite harsh and this is this is kind of one of the reasons i rarely hand out my score sheets anymore because it's got things that don't make sense or might have like a harsh word just to help me remember what to talk about. Um, but yeah, it, it, that's the only reason why we, we sort of talk like this and um, try and maybe sound negative sometimes just because of that's what we've got to do to get to that score so we can build on it. Also, I feel like this session is like you're getting like an insight into the judges, right? So mm -hmm. <clears throat> You wouldn't, I completely agree, you wouldn't kind of communicate like this to a performer, um, but I feel like the participants are getting a, a, a real insight into kind of how the judges think. Mm. Yeah. And, and a lot of time when we communicate, we'll communicate it with a fix rather than just saying this is an issue. Yeah. 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 All right. So we've got, let's see, yeah, 91, 84, 94. Uh, really, really good. Unison sounded like one really big guy. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. Yeah. Uh, Chris Dara, you've written some good stuff there. Some scooping into the high notes. Want to bring it home in the last chord. Didn't quite make it. Yeah, there were actually, I think there were a couple of bases in that last chord that were just slightly on top of that mm -hmm. pitch, not right where they needed to be. Um, Tav, you said body language is engaging and appropriate, selling the message of the song, excellent expression, this visual vocal balance. Now, Ash, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's category language, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good. I, yeah. just, I, I might have a different opinion, but yeah, let's go on. Keep going. Um, from, <laughs> from Rachel, average 84. So, okay, you're going all, all categories. Energetic performance, very good uh, sync and tuning, sectional unity and intersection unity. Ah, now that, that's some music category stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so it looks like uh, most people are in the, uh, oh, Roy Schofield. Ash, do you know a Roy Schofield? Um, I think I met him a couple of times. Okay. Um, overall 85, great unity dynamic variation, some distractions in performance. So the some distractions in performance, that's an interesting comment, Roy, because once you start getting into this level, it is the some distractions. You're, you're looking for the, the little things to uh, really criticize. Uh, but let's go around the categories and let's see where we were at. Who wants to go first? Okay. All right, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, for this one, I had them at, uh, at an 87, uh, which uh, in some years uh, would put you in the top 10 of choruses internationally. Some years it would put you just outside of that top 10 choruses internationally. Uh, there was a lot of good stuff coming across. There were some great dynamics, but there were those little occasional voices, those slides where there's just someone slightly trailing behind. Um, it's a lot of the comments I have would actually be quite similar to the uh, previous video. It's just that these guys are doing it to a lesser scale. They're, they've got less of those distractions coming through. And that's really what the A level is. It's... Um, the consistency and if you do everything perfectly consistently you get a 100 and uh so far i haven't given out a 100 so yeah 
Uh, in the singing category, um, so I gave them an 84 and the reference was right, right at an 84. Um, the, the number one thing that I noticed consistently in this chorus, and this was back uh, in, this performance was from 2015. And so they've corrected a lot of these things uh, now, but it's, it's a three in one chorus. It's the top three parts and the bases, mm. right? Um, uh, and if I, I don't know if this demonstration is going to come across, but I'm going to give I'm going to give it a go. So when when the bases posted their last note, they posted more more is had had that quality to it. And if they posted more more, just kind of more of a natural sound with more of a full spectrum sound, that would have linked with the other three parts. And that was a constant theme throughout the entire performance. There was quite consistently this this kind of sound happening in the basses and I just wanted a more natural sound. So that I think uh, would make a massive difference to this entire performance from a singing category. Cool, I like that. Um, so performance wise, um, <laughs> the one thing I liked writing here was that, um, you know, was, okay, so let's get the good stuff out of the way. They're awesome and you just can, cannot ignore the sound and the energy and the sound. And if you close your eyes, you're like, whoa, what is this group? Then I'd look up and I'm like, is that the same group? Uh, because they had like this uniform look and sound without a uniform look, if that makes sense. So they've got that, they've got that very sort of uh, school, school or college kind of look um, with that, the jackets and everything. And then they sound super tight. And then as the song went on, the moves got more and more individual. Um, and it's like, they were like, okay, cool. We'll sing this really well, dress nice. Um, and guys, just just give give your energy and give your own interpretation kind of, of the song. That, you know, because there was bits where the dynamic would drop and some guys would get into it and then others wouldn't. And I'm like, oh, if you just spend a little bit more time on that. Um, because cause when you wear such a tight uniform like that, it, it people are, ex your, your brain is just expecting uniform moves and things like that you know um so that's that's the kind of thing where yeah you'd look really good doing some really tight choreo stuff to this because you've dressed that way you sing that way um so that's what i've got like some missed opportunities and stuff that's why it's only an 87 <laughs> only an 87 um I was just going to add one thing. I, th I think that's a really good point, Ash, because um, I remember the first time I saw these guys with their outfits and thought, wow, this is going to be like, they're going to sing a marching tune. Mm -hmm. um, and they were singing swing. And it was actually an element where I thought maybe the performance judge would pick up on that and, and think and say, um, maybe like consider um, an outfit that would, that would go better with the type of performance that you want to do. So mm. it was a good, good call out. I'm just going to address this uh, question from John uh, coming on the execution of the swing. So this was a, I guess I describe it as a hard swing. It kind of, uh, and uh, John, if you want to sort of clarify what element of the execution, go ahead. For, but um, what I'm hearing, it's a really hard swing, like, uh, like think sort of Charlie Parker's fastest stuff, that kind of hard swing. And da, 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 da. It was really on the fast end of that. Um, uh, it, would, it was probably at times close to falling apart, but they kept it together enough that it wasn't a distraction. If they had done this at a slower tempo, you would have expected more of your traditional swing where you really uh, sort of felt the swing element, but this was just such a, a hard and fast swing um, that it, uh, yeah, almost ends up in that border area of is it swing or is it just really fast semi waivers? <laughs> But no, it is, it is just a, a hard swing. I thought they executed it well um, and it, it suited the tempo they were at. If you add that tempo, you've got to swing fast. Um, and I've got a comment from Tav. Uh, yeah, if you're going to if you score performance, you do have to look a little more, I guess, from uh, one thing that you're all seeing that the uh, performers that I judge don't often see is my face. Because as a music judge, normally this is what you get to see. So um, I, I spend most of my time writing. Um, Ash, I'm assuming that most of your time you're writing without looking at what you're writing. You're just sort of scribbling and hoping that it's going on the page. Yeah, I'm usually uh, kind of like this. 
<laughs> Rob, you're doing a bit of both, looking and writing? Um, yeah, look, I, I start out by not looking and then like allow my ears to kind of adjust to the, to the sound. And then if I think, oh, there's maybe a bit of strain happening in one of the voices, then I'll look up uh, and then <clears throat> just to, to, to confirm what I'm, what I'm hearing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's probably a combination of both. So that, that is uh, something I will look up if there is something going on that's something's gone incredibly wrong, then I'll, I'll look up. Mm. Um, also, sometimes if there's a song that's got a lot of uh, choreography in it and you can really hear the way that people are moving and it's affecting the musicality of the performance, then I'll look up and go, right, that choreography, not helping you music school. So sometimes I, even I will comment on the choreography. Oh, that's like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our uh, last video, but uh, are we opening the floor to questions? About anything to do with judging? Yeah, if you guys About where, where's, where's Ash's where? badge? Um, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. I, I'm going to give a call out to uh, Rachel and Roy. Um, you guys nailed the last score of that performance, so... You guys should consider consider going mm. being singing judges. Okay, uh, we got a we got a question here from Tab. How are judges evaluated when they shadow judge? Um, so, when you shadow judge at international, your scores you submit them to a CA, and uh, then at the end you get a uh, sort of a graph which shows here's where you were, here's where the guys who were whose scores actually count were, and you get to see exactly where you stack up. And it's a very similar thing that we do at the uh, judges school. Um, so what we, what we do is we do three tests over three days and they're three long days. Um, and at the end of each test, you get a graph and it shows you how close you were. And we try to aim to have a standard deviation of no more than 3.5% uh, in either direction. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how we get evaluated on scoring. Uh, there is also a lot of mock evaluations where we will give a mock evaluation to a quartet usually made up of other candidate judges or um, at the last judges school, we were lucky enough to actually have someone, uh, a quartet come in for us to score and then evaluate. Um, and then we give the evaluations and whoever's sort of, uh, whichever international judge is running it for that year will sort of tell us, okay, I like this about your evaluation. I liked that about your evaluation. You maybe could have addressed this uh, a little better. Um, uh, I guess the, the only problem with that is usually the, uh, the fake scenarios that we put in those uh, fake evaluations are much more outlandish than what happens in real life. <laughs> They're never as exciting. <laughs> Yeah, if, if, I, I think that the, I'd, I'd add to that and say if anyone's um, uh, an aspiring judge wants to do this in the future, one of the one of the key things is around the evaluation, right? So the score is important for sure, but then when you are meeting with a group, um, you have a very short period of, of time to convey, um, you know, what they did well, what they could be doing better, and then uh, provide them with a bit of coaching. So I'd recommend um, if you're interested start to start to do a val start to coach um because that's like writing down a score to me is probably the easier of the component right like the eval is is much more intricate so i encourage you to do that oh, well that's kind of why we do this i mean that's getting a number is one thing but getting feedback that you can use is another thing i got a question in the q a section from uh chris daria it says scores aside the comments seem to indicate that everyone hears different things in the performance how do you gain any homo homogeneity homogeneity in scoring scoring um i'm guessing that just means sameness yes <laughs> how do we how do we get that consistency um so i guess the first thing is normally we would not judge like this uh, being in the room, uh, we all hear some of the same stuff, but uh, this is also the point of a mic tester. Uh, it's not just about making sure that the microphones work. Often it's a chance for the judges uh, will listen to that first mic testing quartet and then we'll have a little huddle and say, I was hearing this, I was hearing that. And we sort of, you know, make sure that we're all on the level. Um, 
and also, also just having the judges score every three years keep, uh, keeps us And uh, these videos that you're seeing, every now and then we'll do some of them and uh, pull out the scores and see how close we were just to sort of keep ourselves in tune. Uh, no, do you guys do anything else to kind of keep yourself on the level? One of the things I love doing um, mm. uh, is looking at, uh, so we have this uh, site uh, for the judges online and there's a whole bunch of playlists and you can go through and start to score um, a, a whole bunch of groups, right? And you have no idea what their score is at all. And it just gives you uh, practice at scoring. And then you can then later uh, refer to the reference score and see how close you got. Um, and it's a great way of uh, getting your numbers and getting your brain attuned to what is a 60, what's a 65, what's a 75, etc. So, um, Chris, I hope that answers your question. Uh, another question we've got in the Q&A section from Graham Kingsford. Um, I know overtly religious songs don't qualify in competition. What about a song like Irish Blessing? Would that get penalty points? Um, Irish Blessing uh, only has one dominant seventh chord. So from a music perspective, it's pretty low on the barbershop side of things. Um, but uh, generally religious stuff, uh, yeah, no religious stuff, no patriotic stuff in contest. Um, I've only seen that happen in my judging experience once where a quartet was disqualified. They did uh, two uh, religious tunes. They were also both in the in a doo-wop style, not in a barbershop style, so they got double disqualified. Um, <laughs> not that that makes any difference. It's still a zero. Um, but generally religious songs, uh, that comes under the purview of the performance category. Yes, that's my area. Um, but yeah, that's a big old uh, question. And it's like, what is religious? What is patriotic? And, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of discussion that's been had. And very recently, actually, the BHS has actually delved into it deep. And there is some, um, if, you, if you go on the BHS, uh, like, YouTube and stuff. I'm sure there's somewhere. It was from a year or so ago, maybe that um, they did a real deep dive into like trying to help people realize what is patriotic or what is religious. Um, and you know, some things that might seem obviously religious aren't because of the way it's presented. You know, and um, things like that. Like, and so it's not just a lyric thing. It's about how it's how it's uh, performed, you know, and what is the intent of the performer kind of thing. It's it's very tricky, um, but you know the rules are there, so most people don't even bother um, trying to go into those areas. So um, yeah, it's pretty rare that that stuff comes up. I remember uh, uh, Crossroads. If you all remember singing "Lucky Old Son" uh, at international. And they scored a 94 something with that song. And that was with a penalty in the performance category um, because of the, the religious nature of the song. And they mm. even changed the song, right? So on their recording, um, the beginning is, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh, 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 oh. And then on the contest stage, it was just, oh, 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 oh. So they were, you know, they tried to adjust the song to make sure to, to, to try and make it non sort of religious, uh, but it ended up still getting a, a penalty, but they still like, you know, won the whole contest. So. They knew that they knew but, that going in as well. Yeah, like, and I think we're going to get a penalty. But, oh, well. I'm pretty sure the penalty was, was like, it was one point or something like that. And to, to be completely honest, until I sort of heard a later version of it, I had no idea it was a, uh, religious song and maybe it's because i am a music judge but i took it literally to be about the sun it's like oh look the sun it just all it has to do is light up the sky that's nice Me too, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't i didn't think any deeper than that and i just enjoyed the song um and it i guess it helps it also helps that the singing score was 95.6 <laughs> so. yeah that's definitely not what you call a silver medal score is it <laughs> uh, the uh, uh and the other side of that is uh patriotic stuff and um i haven't seen any patriotic stuff i know that um a, a lot of people ask me back when um uh what's the texan chorus called uh vocal majority. vocal majority when they did johnny comes marching home uh and they had like literally the, the usgi marching home and it was questions like 
how is that it not counted as patriotic? And I guess they didn't get the flag out. But um, once again, I guess it comes down to um, if you were to put this in any other country, would it seem very centric to them? Or no, it's it's all up to individual taste, and it's one of those things that's an ongoing discussion. And I don't think we're ever going to have a definitive answer. It'll just evolve and change as uh, we all evolve and change. All right, uh, we have another question uh, from Tav. Does the category school prepare you for shadow judging or do they sort of chuck you in? <laughs> well, I can, I can take first, uh, first uh, go at this. Um, so I will definitely say that category school was quite uh, daunting. I mean, it was fantastic to see like friends there and that was awesome. So it was a very friendly atmosphere. Um, but I did feel a little bit like, uh, what am I, what am I supposed to be doing? Um, so, uh, Tav, what I'd encourage is, again, do a little bit of this, uh, scoring, shadow scoring prior to category school, and then also, um, prepare for particularly the evals, how to give a eval, start to, start to practice that. And then if you do those two things, I think category school then takes that and then shapes it into what you need to be, to be a judge. Cool. Ash, you got any comments about the school process? Um, if you can get in, get in. It's awesome. Uh, it's just, yeah, if you like barbershop, how can you not like talking about it for three days, nonstop, <laughs> nine to five, and then go have a beer later and talk about it some more. It's, it's so, yeah, yeah, you, it's so good. And then you just realise what's good. And it's not even just about barbershop. You just understand everything a lot better after that about what makes a good song or what makes you know you know you see someone's performance on like just watching anything and you're like oh, oh i see what they're doing there or you know it's just awesome it will yeah it definitely has a lot of discussions on a deeper level uh but uh i guess the other side of it is it is grueling they are 12 hour days so it usually goes from like eight to eight or nine to nine uh we do have lunch and a dinner break but it just most of the time we're sitting there doing in-depth musical analysis uh talking through stuff um usually we do kind of ease ourselves into it you know we'll start off with like uh sort of an open hand and sort of like we'll watch videos and we'll all sort of say oh i had it about here i had it about here before we get into the sort of eyes down no talking test kind of situations um but uh one thing you can do is always have a look at videos yourself judge them yourself the uh, Contest and Judging Handbook is available, free, freely available on the internet for anyone to just go and download. So, um, yeah, have a look at that if you're super interested. Anyway, I think that's it for us tonight. Um, and uh, we'll pass it over to President Millgate to wrap us up. Thanks very much, guys. What a great session. Um, look, so much information there and, and thank you to everyone who participated and some really great questions, uh, some really good stuff. Keep an eye on our YouTube channel as this, this session will be uploaded there in the, in the next short while. And all of our previous BHA live sessions are also available there. So please check them out by going to YouTube and searching for Barbershop Harmony Australia or just go to the BHA website and follow the links on the homepage. Keep an eye out for the registration link for next week there as well. We'll be emailing this out as well as posting links on our social media channels, or you can just keep an eye on the BHA Live page on our website. Next week's session is going to be great. We've got one of our Aussie barbershop superstars, Mr. Alex Morris, coming back with a session called Uncovering Your Music. So that's going to be a good one. Hey, before you go, let me tell you about an upcoming live stream event that's being put on by the Association of International Champions. It's called This Is The Moment. It's uh, basically during this time of anxiety, isolation and barbershop drought, the Australian, uh, sorry, the Association of International Champions is passionate about providing a performance of a lifetime for the entire barbershop community. This Is The Moment is gonna be a night of quality barbershop and life enrichment presented to a world in desperate need. Now, it's on at night time in the United States. 6.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time, United States time, but that works out to be 8.30 a.m. Sydney time or 6.30 a.m. Perth time. So I do encourage you to jump on and have a look. You need to go to watch.aicgold.com to register. 
it's all free it streams for free but again i've just put that link into the chat for you to have a look at it's watch.aicgold.com a huge thanks again boys for your session tonight it's been fantastic in the meantime stay safe have a great weekend we'll see everybody back here again for another session next week good night